Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. We also have Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at TPM Videos. Disneyland, the place where Disney theme park magic was born. Located in Anaheim, California, Disneyland opened its gates on July 17th, 1955. But opening day was far from magical. It was extremely hot, they ran out of food, rides were breaking down, and half of the 28,000 people in the park entered using counterfeit tickets. It was a mess. Well, fast forward 63 years where today at Disneyland, the Disney magic is alive and well. It's the only Disney park Walt Disney himself was able to experience, and his legacy definitely lives on. To honor Walt, the park keeps the lamp on in the window of Walt Disney's 500 square foot apartment above the Main Street Fire Station. But that's not all. Disneyland is filled with tons of history and elements that help create a magical, seamless experience for the guest. In our Secrets of Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom episode, there's a lot of points covered that also apply to Disneyland, such as the Smellitzers on Main Street, the 30-step trash can rule, and Disney tinting their water using dyes. So instead of repeating those facts in depth, we're going to dive into Disneyland history and explore different secrets that are unique to the Disneyland park. What makes a lot of them unique is that Walt Disney himself had a personal hand in almost every one of them. So to all who come to this happy place, welcome. And sit back as we count down the top 10 best secrets and facts of Disneyland. Number 10. The Opening Credits As you pass through the front gates, you'll find yourself on Main Street USA, inspired by Walt Disney's hometown of Marceline, Missouri. Disneyland was Walt's park. It was his playground. And with the help of many people around him, they were able to bring this magical world to life. When designing Disneyland, Walt thought about everything as a movie. Well, in this movie called Disneyland, Main Street was the opening shot and the dozens of windows along the buildings acted as the opening credits. If you take a close look, you'll notice names on the windows of these buildings. A lot of people might think they're fictitious, but these are the names of the real people who made Disneyland possible. Above the market house, you'll find Ron Dominguez, who lived on the land that Walt Disney purchased to build Disneyland. To the right of Disneyana, you'll find Mark Davis, an Imagineer who designed characters for classic attractions like Jungle Cruise and the Enchanted Tiki Room. Walt Disney himself also has a window where he's credited as the casting agency, since he cast all the people who would turn his dream into this reality. The tradition of Main Street windows has continued into other Disney parks, like Magic Kingdom in Florida. And now, window dedications are strictly reserved for retiring Imagineers who've made a major impact on Disney parks, such as Tony Baxter. His window was added in 2013 when he retired. Number 9. The Test Wall Building Disneyland wasn't the smoothest process for Walt Disney and his team. Like we said earlier, Walt Disney thought about the park as a movie, but they also thought building Disneyland would be like building the sets for a movie. Well, it was nothing like building sets, since these buildings needed to be permanent structures. So during construction, they were scrambling to finish the park on time and apparently left a little bit of construction history behind. Hidden on Main Street near the lockers, there's a water fountain surrounded by a brick wall. And this is known as the Test Wall. It was put there in 1954 to test different masonry patterns and bricks that would be used in Disneyland. You can see the difference in brick patterns and styles in these sections here. Well, legend has it that it was left in its place and not destroyed because they didn't have the budget to remove the wall and they were racing to get the park finished by opening day. And now, 63 years later, it's still there, tucked away on Main Street. Number 8. Drawing Backwards At the center of Disneyland sits the iconic Sleeping Beauty Castle. It's the original Disney castle. But did you know that the front of the castle was supposed to be the back? Well, one day, the Imagineers were playing around with the design, turned the model around, Walt Disney unexpectedly walked in, and to their surprise, he liked the back even more. 
So they went ahead and designed the castle to appear in the park as we know it today, with the drawbridge leading you through the arch. Now when it comes to the castle's drawbridge, it's actually real. It can be raised and lowered, but it's only been used twice in history. Once for the opening of Disneyland in 1955, and in 1983 for the rededication of Fantasyland. Number 7. Fritos Doritos now, did you know that Doritos were actually born at Disneyland? Well, in 1955, Walt Disney was convinced by the Frito-Lay company to let them open a Mexican restaurant in the park. Disney agreed, and they opened Casa de Fritos in Frontierland. Now, a local Anaheim company called Alex Foods made all their tortillas. So one day, a sales rep from Alex Foods stopped by the restaurant and saw a bunch of tortillas in the trash. He told them, instead of throwing out the stale tortillas, to cut them up, fry them, and add a little seasoning. So, Casa de Fritos began serving these fried chips in the park, without Frito-Lay knowing. Well, around a year later, a marketing executive from Frito-Lay stopped by the park and instantly fell in love with these seasoned fried chips. He contracted Alex Foods to produce the chips for Frito-Lay, called them Doritos, and by 1966, they were a nationwide hit. If you notice, the original Doritos logo actually pays tribute to the Disneyland logo. And since we're on the topic of Doritos, what's your favorite flavor? Comment below! Number 6. E-Tickets The original 1955 Tomorrowland was pretty bare since there were quite a few budget cuts leading up to the opening of Disneyland. Well, then everything changed with the Tomorrowland expansion in June of 1959. That included the addition of the monorail, the Matterhorn bobsleds, and the submarine voyage. Well, in the early days of Disneyland, they sold ticket books that grouped attractions in terms of popularity, using the letters A, B, C, and D. During the 1959 expansion, the added rides were now the new popular attractions and Disney needed another classification for these rides. So, the solution was to add the letter E to the ticket book, and the E-Ticket attraction was born. Now it's no surprise that these attractions were extremely popular, since Walt Disney was always finding ways to bring new, innovative experiences to Disneyland. The fleet of submarines was the eighth largest in the world, the monorail was the first daily operating monorail in the Western Hemisphere, and the Matterhorn was the world's first ever tubular steel roller coaster to be built. Number 5. The Happiest Cats on Earth The cats of Disney films aren't the only cats to call Disneyland home. There's approximately 200 feral cats that live in the Disneyland Resort. The cats date all the way back to 1955, when Walt Disney was planning the Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough attraction. When Walt and the Imagineers went inside the castle, they found dozens of feral cats. At the same time, Mickey and Minnie weren't the only rodents living in the park either. Walt realized Disneyland had a major rodent problem, so instead of trying to get rid of the cats, the solution was to keep them around so they could get rid of the unwanted rodents in the park. Disney began taking care of the cats, providing them feeding stations just in case, and medical treatment if they need it. Usually the cats come out at night when the park's closed, but it's not uncommon for guests to see some of them wandering the park during the day. Number 4. Agri-Future Tomorrowland is the place where the future is today. But, did you know that all the plants in Tomorrowland are meant to be edible? Walt Disney himself said that Tomorrowland would give you an opportunity to participate in adventures that are a living blueprint of our future. Well, the current 1998 incarnation of Tomorrowland was designed with agri-future in mind. The future of agriculture. The idea is that all available space reserved for landscaping is used as sustainable ways to maintain nourishing food supplies for a growing population. Cabbage, lettuce, herbs, and fruit trees are found all around Tomorrowland. Now, although these plants do look appetizing, it's probably not a good idea to actually eat them, but it's still a neat little secret of Tomorrowland. Number 3. The Lily Bell Walt always envisioned a special presidential passenger coach on the Disneyland Railroad, and the Lily Bell is very special for that reason. Not only is it named after Walt Disney's wife Lillian, it's also the only passenger car left at Disneyland from the park's original trains. 
Although Walt never got to see the car as it looks today, his wife Lillian helped design the interior of the presidential coach in 1976 as a tribute to Walt. In 2004, the Lily Bell was refurbished after being out of use since 1995. During the refurbishment, they actually installed the leftover carpet that was designed to be used in Walt's apartment above Main Street. And there's actually a lot of hidden Mickeys in that carpet. Do you see them? Number 2. The Secret Club Nestled right into New Orleans Square, you'll find Disneyland's Secret Club. Now Walt Disney wanted the park to have an exclusive place to entertain corporate sponsors and VIPs. He got this idea from the VIP lounges at the 1964 World's Fair. So in May of 1967, Club 33 officially opened at Disneyland. Walt never got to see his private club completed, but since opening, it's remained very exclusive. To enter, you used to have to press a buzzer, but now you scan your membership card to open the door. With only about 500 members, the club is so secretive that there's a lot of conflicting information about how much it actually costs to join. But if you're wondering, you're looking at initiation fees between $25,000 to $50,000, plus yearly membership fees between $12,000 to $30,000, not to mention the 14-year waiting list if you don't already have a membership. Now there's a couple theories on why this secret club is called Club 33. One theory is that it's just the address of the building. The other is that when Walt was coming up with the idea, there were 33 corporate sponsors at the time. Now which one do you think is true? Number 1. The Skull Pirates of the Caribbean is a classic Disney attraction. It was the last attraction actually that Walt himself helped design. Although he was never able to experience the completed ride, it officially opened on March 18th, 1967. It features 128 audio animatronics, including pirates, villagers, and animals. But before you get a glimpse at those animatronics, you plunge into a grotto where you'll find pirate skeletons guarding their treasure. Well, in 1967 when the ride was built, Imagineers at the time didn't think fake skeletons were convincing enough, so they purchased real ones to use in the ride. Pirates of the Caribbean has gone through many refurbishments since it opened, and now only one real skull remains. It can be found in the treasure room on the headboard of the bed. So which secret and piece of Disneyland history did you find the most interesting? Were there some facts that you didn't know? Or do you have some Disneyland secrets you want to share? Leave a comment down below and start a conversation. If you have any videos from the Disney parks that you'd like to share with us to be used in future videos, follow the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching! Click the TPM icon on the screen to subscribe to this channel and check out some of these other videos which we're sure you'll like!